Hey guys, uh, back here with another tutorial, demo, whatchamacallit, <laughs> um, for one of my Unity Asset Store packages. This one is Audioscape. Uh, so if that's what you're here for, you're in the right place. I'm just going to go over the folder structure a little bit and then kind of rush through setting up a basic uh, scene with, uh, with this tool. And what that looks like, and kind of go over some of the some of the variables, but they are all uh, tool tipped, so you can check them all out. And if that's not enough for you, you can look at the documentation. There's a little tutorial there, as well. And um, anyway, let's get started. So if you have one of my packages, you'll have this folder already. But otherwise, you'll have this new folder, uh, an Umber Evolution folder. Inside, you'll find a general scripts which is scripts, um, and in this case I'm using the read-only and inspector attribute I've created that grays out uh, variables like this that I need to be public so that their uh, values are saved by Unity, uh, but I don't want them to be messed with. That just grays them out so that uh, you, can't, uh, you can't touch them, but sometimes it's good information to have so you can look at it and cross-reference with, uh, with other things. And any scripts that, that are used in multiple projects like this one will be put in this folder here um, but the audioscape specific stuff is going to have its own folder just like every other package and right in the root of that you'll have the readme that goes through everything I might actually move to PDF soon if I have any bigger packages with pictures and stuff because writing a TXT file is kinda rough and I imagine it's <laughs> it's not going to be that that fun to read but it is kind of a little bit of an information overload and it just has a little bit of a description, um, how to set up a scene, which is actually very short. But then the how-to guide actually goes through how to use what you've set up. Advanced notes will take you through um, some functionality I've added, which is a little bit more complex uh, than you may need. And then the inspector variables break down. It just goes through every variable you can set and gives you a blurb on it. It's very similar to what you'll get from the, from the tool tips. Um, so first things first. In this Audioscape folder, you have the editor folder, which holds the editor scripts, uh, prefabs, which holds some pre-built stuff. Uh, you can set this up yourself, but it's just easier to drag and drop the, the prefabs. I've, I've preset them for you. A resources folder that I may phase out in the future. Um, don't rename anything in here <laughs> or move it or delete it, because um, right now it's being used to generate things uh, and put some objects in the scene. And this is like the default template I've used. Um, then there's the the demo scene that you can take a look at if you need a little bit of a reference, and then the scripts that that perform uh, perform the magic, and the serializable class uh, that stores a lot of information. So first things first, you're going to go to the prefab folder. You're going to add an Audioscape manager to the scene. If you try to add a second one, it's going to tell you you can't, and if you don't have one, then nothing's going to work properly. Second thing you're going to do is add an audioscape to the scene. Um, so you can add as many as you want. I like to name them, so like forest audio, audioscape, and then let's put a sky audioscape in there. So then to set up, this, this is basically all you need to do for setup. You're gonna have to give it a size, obviously, so say you want the size to be 10 by 10 by five, we can, Give it a fancy color so we can kind of differentiate it from everything else. Say we want the forest to be 10 by 10 by 2. We're going to make it green. The forest should be, unless you're in some horror game or it's fall. And you don't live in Canada where I do, where we have a lot of pine trees and spruce trees that stay green all day. Uh, though some of you down in the States will too, but anyway. <laughs> off of that tangent. So then to set up an audioscape, <clears throat> you're going to have to give, you don't have to give your clips names, but I like to give them names. So we can have a, a hawk or, um, because we're in Canada, let's give it a, give it a loon. We can put 10 loons in the scene. Uh, we can set their min and max uh, time between plays. Oh, and these three settings here, or five settings here, are going to be the same as what you see in the audio source, sorry. Um, 
the volume, uh, the pitch, spatial blend, they're all linked directly to the audio source. And then same with the min, min distance and max distance. So if you don't know what those are, uh, read up on your Unity documentation. And just drag and drop your clip into here. So we'll have like a loon call or something we could put. Um, not going to worry about static sound for now. Set the audio scape and then it'll randomly place 10 uh, little players throughout the audio scape. And then they'll, they'll be here in the inspector too and named nicely for you. So if you wanted to change them all to Hawks and give it a different, a different clip, you can do that. And you, you notice right here, uh, the names being updated in real time. And in the in these there are an audio source and an audio source or an audioscape clip player. Uh, this just does the magic when you hit play. So you set up the scene. Um, you set how long it takes them to play. Once they finish playing, they'll move to a new spot within uh, within that audioscape. Unless I click static sound, in which case they're just going to sit there. They're going to keep on playing randomly, but they're not going to move. And you'll notice when I hit play, it does the same thing as when I hit the set audio escape button. That's because uh, I want to make sure that at runtime, in case you haven't clicked this button, then it's generating uh, the clips it needs to generate. If you want to prevent that, you can hit persist, uh, persistent placement, and then this button stops working, and they stop moving on play. This is more useful in... Um, cases where you have static sounds like turbines and stuff that you want to be managed by an audio escape just so for this specific reason that you can rename them easily um, you can set the volumes the pitch these settings and propagate them across uh, all these sources without having to change each source um, you can also do this with prefabs if you're familiar with that which I hope you are if you're uh, using unity but let's say you have three different turbine prefabs spread out throughout the level. Maybe you want your audio managed by Audioscape because they're all playing the same noise, uh, but you don't want to overwrite any any other data. So not something you have to use. It's in the advanced notes uh, if you want to if you want to use the static functions. The big thing is to quickly set up um, a space with a lot of organic ambient noise. So then we could add more. Uh, we could add like five different clips. We could have loons and hawks or different types of uh, noises. So you could have like uh, a hawk shriek, hawk uh, low shriek, hawk high pitch shriek. <laughs> you know, you can set up a lot of different stuff like that and they'll automatically be spread throughout the scene. Just some tips to make sure you're your audio clips don't become too dense otherwise it'll sound a little hectic and make sure they're not too sparse either otherwise it'll sound a little bit dead and you can do that just by tweaking the number that are generated in the scene now that i've said all these we have a lot more a lot more life in the scene um so there's a few other things for you to explore i'll let you do that on your own so i don't waste too much of your time with this video and i re recommend you go through the documentation check it out one thing i will touch on though is the audio escape manager it has a master volume slider that controls the volume of every audio scape in the scene. Just adds a multiplier to it really. This is going to be useful if you have a like a player volume setting. Just tie it into the this variable on your audio scape manager and that's all all you need to do and it'll it'll uh, let them control the SFX with with your one slider. Without so you don't have to manually link all this procedurally generated stuff um, or write your own scripts to do so. Uh, to link it to a to a volume slider because so that wouldn't that wouldn't be fun. Distance optimization I don't really recommend using unless you have an extremely large scene uh, with a lot of audio scapes. But if you need them to stop playing sounds uh, when the player gets far enough away from them, or you need them to just pause and freeze to save save some resources, you can use distance optimization. So you check off this this little box and then make sure this is a positive value. If it's negative, it's disabled anyway. And if you have uh, more than one audio listener in the scene, uh, this also will not work because it works based on the assumption that, like Unity says, you can only have one audio listener in the scene. So it checks for the distance from the center of an audio scape to, or the center of all audio scapes, sorry, to the only audio listener in the scene. So right now at 500, if the audio listener is within 500 units of the center of any of the audio scapes, they'll work. As soon as you get further than that, 
away from the audio scapes. Then everything freezes. They stop playing, they stop moving, the timer stop counting, all that freezes. Saves you a little bit on resources. Um, it's not a whole lot that it saves you, just because all that stuff is pretty efficient anyway, and which is why I recommend not using it, because the default setting for uh, audio sources for your max um, distance is 500 units anyway, which is pretty huge. Um, and it's good. It's good to let those things keep um, working because if they if they kind of cut off early it'd be like setting the max distance on an explosion to you know 10 or whatever um the player's gonna it's gonna sound really good and all of a sudden it's just gonna drop off and um go silent it's gonna feel very unnatural whereas with the the larger distances the volume still gets like barely barely perceptible so you can't really pick it up that easily but everything added together will create a nice organic feel um if you let it play out. So for that reason, I don't recommend optimizing it at all. I recommend it letting it be natural. But that being said, there are some cases where I understand you have a lot of audio going on, you have a lot of a huge scene, um, and you will need to make use of this optimization, so I have included it. That concludes this quick tutorial. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, any bugs you find, or um, anything you want to know more about, or suggestions for improvement, I'm always looking to improve. So feel free to comment on the bottom of this video or uh, send me a review or something on the Unity uh, Asset Store page for this asset. Or just go to my contact form on the website, which you can find through the Unity Asset Store. Uh, yeah, use the contact form on my website or uh, my emails there as well. There's a lot of ways to get a hold of me. I'm always looking to make these tools better. And if you have any suggestions or anything like that or things you want me to fix or clarify, let me know. Alrighty, have a good one.